All right. John chapter 15, verse 5. Jesus says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him produces much fruit because you can do nothing without me. Now this verse tells us how important it is for a person to, uh, to remain in Christ in order to bear fruit. He says it is impossible to bear fruit without him. And you know, if we can live the life of a Christian without Christ, if we can be nice and kind and do all these things without Christ, you know what? It's not really the life that Jesus is envisioning here. Jesus, the life that Jesus envisions for you and me is a life that bears fruit that requires that we abide in him, that we remain in him. It requires that. And it's, it's a life that we can't do it without him, without his supernatural flow into our life. Now, now, as I've thought about this over the years, I've often wondered, I've often asked the question, what does it mean? What does it really look like to remain in Christ or to abide in Christ? What is Jesus telling his disciples? Uh, what is he requiring? This seems to be uh, something so important to the Christian life. We, we really need to have a good handle on what this looks like. And I've used to, through the years, I used to think, well, okay, what it means is, is, to, is to read the Bible. Read the Bible. But, you know, I've, I found out that, you know, you could read the Bible and not really be abiding in Christ. Uh, what about prayer? Um, down, down through the years, I've also learned that, you know, you can pray. You can pray all kinds of good prayers. And you can have all kinds of good quiet times. But you know what? That doesn't necessarily mean that you're remaining in Christ or abiding in Christ. So what is it? What does it really look like for you and me to do what Jesus is telling us to do? And um, it wasn't really until a couple of years ago um, that, I, that I began to realize what, what's, what's at stake here, what, what, what it requires. And what it requires to abide or remain in Christ what it requires is for me and for you to have to focus on the reality of Christ being present. That's what it is. It's to, it's to take it by faith, take, take it by faith that Jesus is present in your life. In fact, the Bible does say that may, uh, Paul prays for the Ephesians that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Um, also, it says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it talks about the life we, we live. We, we've died, and the life we live is Christ, right? In Galatians 2, 20, it says that the life we now live, we live by faith in the Son of God who loved us and gave himself for us. So, living and abiding in Christ and doing this requires that we acknowledge that Jesus is with us. You follow what I'm saying? It's just, it seems so simple that we, we actually miss it. It, it. There's a moment in there's a moment in the day, or maybe several moments in the day, where you must sit and you must acknowledge the reality that Christ is with you. You're not feeling his presence. You don't have to feel his presence. Because he promised, he says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, once you, by faith you acknowledge that Christ is present in your life, that he's present with you. Now that's that's assuming, of course, that you are a child of God, that you've already responded to the gospel. You've asked him to forgive you of your sins, and you've asked him to come into your life, and you repented and turned from your sins, and now you're trusting in him as your Lord and Savior. Now, that's assuming that that's already taken place in your life. Okay, once you do that, his spirit has now been placed in your heart, your, 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 into your life. And so you wake up, and you acknowledge the reality that Jesus is present in your life. And you do that, and what that does is no longer do you read the Bible uh, just reading the Bible. See, you can read the Bible not really fellowship with Christ or being abiding in Christ until you begin to say, Lord, I know you're with me. I know you're going to speak to me through this word. And that's faith. That's faith. So, so now that you're abiding in Christ, 
Your reading the word is productive. You, then you can hear Christ because you know, as you read the Bible, as you read the Bible, you know Christ is going to speak to you. And then, and then, uh, as you pray and by faith, knowing that Christ is with you, your prayer is going to be different. You're going to start praying knowing that he's listening to you. You're going to start, you're going to start believing in his word. You're going to be, start asking for things instead of just saying these, these, uh, saying worthless prayers that don't say anything. You're going to actually ask for things. You're also going to praise him for things. You're going to, you're going to look for him in everything that you do throughout the day. And when you witness, when you witness, uh, as you're abiding in Christ, you, you're trusting, you're, you're looking for what Jesus might bring you. And you're also trusting he's going to help you to say what you need to say to the other person. And it's the way it is when, when we fellowship in the church. It's really cool. You look for Jesus as you're fellowshipping with other believers. You, you sense the presence of God. You see Jesus in them. And as you serve, you use your spiritual gift to serve the body of Christ. You know that Jesus has given you something to serve somebody with. So I tell you, abiding in Christ, remaining in him means acknowledging him by faith that he's living in your life, and you begin to live depending on that truth. Once you do that, then you begin to bear fruit, like Jesus did. Jesus, Jesus acknowledged that his father was a reality in his life. He looked for the, for the father. He looked for what he was doing. In fact, he says, I, I look and see what my father's doing, and I, the son, I'm doing the same thing. I look at what he's doing. He's taking the initiative I follow his initiative. So what about you? Are you, are you looking for Christ? Are, are you trusting in him? Are you trusting him to show up in your life? Are you believing that he has shown up and he is in your life? Don't wait for your feelings because you know the devil's in control of feelings. And here's the, here's the thing that freed me up. I don't have to feel when I'm praying, I don't have to feel his presence to know that he's present. All I got to know is he promised he would be there. And I begin to pray, not worrying about whether I feel, feel not worrying whether I feel something or not. I can pray knowing he hears me. As, as long as I'm praying according to his will, I can pray that way. That's very freeing. And I'm going to tell you it works. It really works because when you begin to pray, you don't feel like, when you don't feel like God can hear you, you just know God does because of his word, you trust him. And when you begin to pray that way, you see answers. You see God work. I'd rather see God work on my on the outside around me than to feel him. I mean, I, I'd rather I both, but, but you know, there's a lot of people who are just plain satisfied with getting a feeling than they are seeing God really at work all around them. And they try to get the feeling to try to reassure themselves. Uh, and that's backwards. You're, you're, not, you're not living by faith. You're living by feelings. And we need to start living depending on faith and depending on trusting what Jesus said he would be. And you know, Jesus says he's going to be there. He'll be present. You can trust him in his word. So let's abide in him. Let's remain in him. Let's look to him. And guess what? You know, no matter where you go, uh, you might think he's not looking. <laughs> we know he's watching, right? He's watching our every move. He hears our thoughts from afar. He knows, he knows us very well. So we can trust him. So I encourage you today, abide in Christ so that you might bear fruit unto him. Okay? Thank you. Bye-bye.